Climate change has provoked a variety of different emotions for me. Frustration is something that comes up over and over again, feeling like my efforts are a drop in the ocean. There is no other way out, you know, we can't keep sweeping it under the rug. Gemma is strong, caring, determined, kind, fun. When she sets her mind on something, she just does everything in her power that she can to do it. She's got this persistent passion, something that just makes you feel like she's not going to give up. And then that makes you want to maybe join in and help out because it's a lot of work. <laughs> My name is Gemma. I'm almost 30 years old. I work as a language tutor and a yoga instructor. I live in a house with seven other people, one dog and one cat. And we live together because it's fun, basically. It's lovely to finish our boring jobs and spend time with our friends. Okay, what are you guys doing? We're going uh, ice skating, but we haven't got any ice skates. So we made a windsurf board with some skis because there's enough ice on the pond that if we uh, have skis on we won't fall through probably. <laughs> The most unconventional thing we do on a regular basis is uh, getting our food out of a bin. <laughs> a supermarket bin. Another pork shoulder. <laughs> Food waste is one of the biggest causes of excess carbon dioxide emissions globally. And that's a huge factor for, you know, bin raiding being such a worthwhile activity. To have a world where some people go hungry and other people throw food away that's perfectly edible, that's broken, the whole system is broken. When you think about the problem of food waste, it's us, the consumers, that supply this demand for fresh, unseasonal produce every day. That just can't happen without waste. People are very surprised just how good quality the food is, even when it's way beyond its best before date. And I think that just proves that the margin for error that these you know, supermarkets are giving with these best before dates is, is crazy. You know, I think we're able to make our own decisions on what food is good and what food isn't. Saving the world, one sandwich at a time. We actually have so much that we give some away to friends and neighbours and anything really inedible ends up with the animals. Do you want some? Nope. <laughs> oh, you just spat it out! Oh. <laughs> Hurry is good! It's like a tug of war. <laughs> One of the main issues with getting most of our food out of the bin is that we don't get to choose what kind of packaging it comes in. So we end up with a load of mostly plastic, all single use which is why I set up this recycling center. So you just sort the bits into the right boxes, our neighbors come and use it as well, and then I package it up and send it off to TerraCycle, who recycle it and turn it into lots of exciting things. We can compromise and we lose so little, but we are making a point. We're making our voice heard. So we aren't all going to go bin raiding, but we can all cut down on food waste. And waste from homes is a really big part of the problem. But we can solve this by eating leftovers, by planning our shopping better, and realizing that common sense is a better way of understanding whether food's still good than best before dates. So what Gemma does and the way she lives, the real impact, it's not her own carbon footprint. It's about the ripple effect. She influences people around her and they influence people around them 
and these small changes become normalized. It becomes the way of a generation. And so people like Gemma make caring normal, and that's so powerful. It's everything. That's the heart of it. It's the everyday that makes change stick. And that's how we're starting to solve these problems that are looming so large on our horizon.